Hey guys, welcome back to the Hearsay channel. Ty Hears here. I hope you had a fantastic week. I finally did it. I pulled the trigger, I spent some time, I invested the hours, and I made the tohearty.com website. And you know what? If you are a small business, if you're you know, individual entrepreneur, or maybe you just want to create your own blog, as you Google, as you research different kind of platforms that will help you build your own website, primarily three players come out on top, WordPress, Wix, and Squarespace. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about my experience and my knowledge that I gained through the research of all three platforms. And I will also comment on which platform I ended up picking to build my own website and what platforms I think will be a better fit for you. Without further ado, let's do this. Do what everybody else does. Start a business. Build yourself a website. By the way, if the video looks a little bit different, I again continue to experiment with the type of light I'm using. So. Fair disclaimer there. Now, when it comes to the actual websites and when it comes to the video review, first impression slash review, I don't even know how to categorize this video exactly. I want to make sure you understand that I do have some basic understanding and knowledge of the HTML programming and of how to build a website. I've done it for a little while, I actually built and sold websites back in the day, but in a very basic, like, amateur way. So this video is definitely an amateur talking about the amateur experience for the other amateurs. So if you are a professional, if you would like to take a deeper dive on each one of those platforms to understand exactly each and every single feature to understand how the costs break down and how the cost compares across different platforms, I'll link some of the videos that I've used when I was researching and I was preparing to make my own decision. Hopefully it will help you. But as for me, I will give you that basic understanding, that basic knowledge to almost direct where you want to invest more time because spending time and researching those three platforms took me weeks by now I think it took me close I think it's what now September it took me close to six to seven months to arrive at this position where I have the MVP version the initial version of my website out there now publicly available so if you want to waste as much time or if you want to invest as much time please be my guest and go and research each and every one of them but hopefully my video will help you set the ground base and pick maybe one or two to compare them against each other okay fair enough enough of the disclaimers the rest of the video will be structured from the most complex to the least complex tool the most flexible to the least flexible tool that will again hopefully give you that direction to pursue your next decision do what everybody else does start a business Build yourself a website. Starting with WordPress. WordPress is a very popular tool. I think I saw a stat that something like 60% of the websites out there are built on the WordPress base. And there's a reason for that. Websites like TechCrunch, The New Yorker, I think I've seen Variety, Sony Music, as well as Beyonce, her website are all built on WordPress. The big reason for that, the flexibility. This tool, and I think this is more of a tool than a platform, allows you the similar kind of flexibility that you get with Lego pieces. You can tool, retool, build different things. You can have an e-commerce facing a blog. You can have some sort of a subscription service base. You can do different things with the websites. Whatever you've seen out there, that's probably and most likely available to you via certain code functions or third-party applications within WordPress. And with that flexibility comes the complexity. You do have to understand HTML coding. You do have to have, I don't think the basic, it's almost like intermediate knowledge of web development to fully take advantage of all the tools that are available to you. This is a great platform. Again, I cannot emphasize enough how much content there is out there between the YouTube videos, the articles, the guided tutorials, the paid for tutorials, and even third-party consulting services that will help you build out your website on WordPress. The options are out there, they're limitless. You can do whatever you come up with it. Cost-wise, it is a little bit more complex as well because WordPress by itself is free. It's an open source platform. But when you start thinking about building out a website on WordPress, you have to pick a host. You have to pick a server provider who will offer you a space where you can install WordPress and build your website. Paying for that hosting services can be a cost of itself. I'll bet the rest of it, the WordPress is free unless you pay for some applications or pay for the third party services to help you build that website. Otherwise, there are a few offerings out there, a few platforms that offer you the hosting service, but with that hosting service also comes the pre-installed version of the WordPress. So they almost like a Wix or a Squarespace in that regard, where they offer you a platform where you can just log in and start building the website rather than dealing with any installations. And they will even patch and install new versions of WordPress as those come out. But again, the cost will be different, the cost structure will be different, and there is an additional still consideration of the fact that you need to know how to use the tool and how to essentially build out the websites from scratch. Does it sound like a lot of work? 
It is, it is a lot of work. It got me intimidated even at the very beginning when I just stopped realizing how deep that rabbit hole is. But if you are a small business or you're an entrepreneur who is building the website that will have almost constant daily engagement with the clients and customers. If your website is driving the engagement that will further drive the retention of those customers again on that daily or regular basis, I think it's tough to go with any other platform but WordPress because WordPress provides you that top-notch quality and the ceiling is way higher in terms of the things that you can build and the features that you can add to continue to retain your customers. But if you are an individual entrepreneur, if you're just trying to create a blog or maybe a business card website, I do not think that WordPress is the way to go. Do what everybody else does. Start a business. Build yourself a website. Wix. Wix is a service provider. They're a service provider first and foremost because they offer you, instead of that installed application that you have to find a server space for, they offer you a platform where you log in, you create an account, and that's it. You're off to the races to create your own website. You do not need HTML skills unless you want to do something really advanced. You do not have to have any kind of server applications that you need to go and install and reinstall and patch. Everything is there. Everything is available. You can literally go and create a website within minutes. They have the pre-existing templates that you can tailor to your own liking or just run with them and use them as is. And there is a huge marketplace of different applications that can help you expand your SEO, expand your mailing functionality, the subscription service functionality, the login window. Maybe you want to do an e-commerce website where you want to sell stuff. There are multiple layers, there are multiple ways you can implement it. But in terms of the flexibility, it is a step down from WordPress because Again, Wix have to curate their own app portfolio. You cannot just come in and say, I wanna use this third-party developed tool on Wix. Wix have to pre-approve it. Wix have to make sure it's compatible with everything else that's installed already on their platform. So when it comes to WordPress, you can do whatever you want. In Wix, you can do whatever you want within that walled-in garden of what Wix has to offer. When it comes to cost, Wix has a variety of different service plans that you can subscribe for, from the very basic ones to more advanced ones with the e-commerce functionality, support functionality, extended SEO tools, analytics tool, so on and so forth. So there is room for you to grow. Plus, there is always an option, and I think 100% of the time when I had to build and pay for the website on Wix, I was able to find a 50% off discount from your first annual subscription. I don't think it works for month by month, maybe I'm wrong, but when I had to subscribe for the full year and I had to prepay for the full year, I was able to find 50% off discount. This is tremendously helpful for your first year, especially if you wanna enter, test things around, see for the first year how you're doing, and then decide whether you wanna stick with Wix or move on. Fair disclaimer, Wix is not as easy to switch from because once you build a website, even if you wanna switch from one template to the other, you essentially have to build everything from scratch. So there is a barrier to exit from the platform. When it comes to the use case, if you're a small business, you wanna offer an opportunity to your customers to find you. Maybe there's some additional perks and benefits they can find on your website. Maybe there is an e-commerce platform where they can buy your products. You can definitely accomplish all of that on Wix. I wouldn't rely on Wix if you're building out for the major corporation or for a major expansion of your brand. That's when you wanna start considering moving up to the WordPress, to the next tier of flexibility. But for now, if you're small enough, if you do not have millions of people coming to your website, Wix is perfect. And Wix is also great for the individual entrepreneurs like myself, or if you want to host your own blog. There is a great blogging tool. It can be a little bit clunky here and there, but I've seen a lot of creators using Wix successfully, so it's definitely a platform to go after. And as I've mentioned earlier in this video, I do have the most experience with Wix. I think Wix was one of the first ones to offer this kind of subscription platform service, so maybe it was eight, nine years ago when I built my first Wix website. And I've built multiple websites for different people, whether they were clients or friends and family. So I've been there, I've seen how it's been evolving, and I definitely can see how this platform will offer you enough to grow for years to come. Do what everybody else does. Start a business. Build yourself a website. Squarespace. Squarespace is the late entrant into the game, but I think they've ramped up their presence quite significantly over the past couple of years. If you look across the board, even here on YouTube, they sponsor so many creators and so many people are talking about them and using their website. So you can definitely understand that what they offer 
have some merit to it. There is some quality. There is something that you can use to build your own website. When it comes to tiering, Squarespace is definitely the last out of the three when it comes to flexibility. Even the positioning of their items on the page are very strictly limited to certain boxes. It's not like Wix where you can, you know, overlap things, you can put things next to each other that not necessarily fit, or WordPress where you can do whatever the hell you want. Here you have to be very specific. There are very specific number of columns. There are very specific width you have to follow and very specific type of sections you can add next to each other or one above the other or below the other. And I think I've skipped the fact that Squarespace is very similar to Wix. It's the same kind of subscription service platform where you do not need any HTML, you do not need to have any apps or install anything. You just create an account, you log in, and you can start building the website within minutes and they are pre-existing templates. But when it comes to comparing both, I'd say Wix, I'd like to think about it as an Android phone and Squarespace is an iPhone. On Wix, like on Android phone, you can customize the visuals, you can customize a lot of more small and nuanced things. Not everything works 100% of the time. The quality is not consistent across the board, but the flexibility is there. Where Squarespace being an iPhone, you have less of option, customization options. You cannot do as many things when it comes to visual designs. You cannot necessarily apply the templates outside of the small pre-existing group of templates that they offer, but what they offer is top-notch and it works well 100% of the time. Cost of the subscription is very comparable to Wix. And as I've said, because of the fact that there's so many other YouTubers and influencers promoting Squarespace, there are plenty of 10 to 20%, I think, discount codes that you can find out there. But yeah, sadly, there is no 50% off code from your first year. And for the use case, I think, again, it is great for the bloggers. It's great for individual entrepreneurs, small businesses. I think, again, as long as it's your first website, as long as you're not getting hit with too many people asking for too many functionalities, Squarespace, similar to Wix, will fit your needs. Do what everybody else does. Start a business. Build yourself a website. So now, what did I pick for my website out of the three? Drum roll, Squarespace. I know I've said that I have the most experience with Wix, but it's interesting. I've tried Squarespace for the first time. It offered me just enough to start with my first personal website. I think the biggest selling point there was is that, yes, I had a particular design in mind. I wanted to show both my business and my creative side side by side. I almost wanted to make it like two sides of the coin on the same website and you can kind of like flip in between them and see both sides of me and understand how they intertwine with each other. And yes, I definitely could have built it on WordPress. It would have taken time. I definitely could have built it on Wix. It would have taken a little bit of time. But Squarespace, it was funny. It even had exactly the template that I needed to create that kind of experience. So I was able to build my website over the weekend. So I was excited. I did it on the trial version. I finally had time and I had a chance to build out the website and now I have it. It's public, it's out there, it's available. When I start thinking back on how much time I have between the two kids, the full-time job, the fact that I'm spending enough time on this channel and I'm actually working on growing it more. So there's a lot going on in the background where I'm talking to other people, where I'm starting to schedule other projects that will hopefully you enjoy. I just realized I don't have time to sit there and maintain and figure out how to build those websites. I need something to build out like this over the weekend. And Squarespace offered me what I needed. The cost was reasonable enough where I'm not spending arm and a leg every single month. And the way I see it is that this will be an evolution process. So for now it works perfectly. It gives me what I need. And if I see that there is a particular demand or if there is a different structure that I want to pursue, there is a high probability that I'll outgrow Squarespace and I'll have to move on to Wix and I'll have to move on to WordPress as more flexible and more advanced tools. But for now, Squarespace is ideal for what I need. And that was the reason why I picked it. Do what everybody else does. Start a business. Build yourself a website. Do you think these three platforms offer you everything that you could use? Did I forget about any other third-party tool that can offer you the same kind of features? And do you even think we need a website in today's day and age when we have all those social media platforms to use? Share your thoughts, comments, and ideas in the section below. Contrary to my tradition, I will myself answer the last question. I don't think for my personal use case, all those social media websites answer what I needed. I, as I said, wanted to show both my personal the business side and my creative personal side. So I did not have a place, whether it was LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, YouTubes of the world, that offered me everything that I needed to show the breadth of things that I can accomplish. So I needed a standalone website to do that, but it doesn't mean that I'm completely married to it. It doesn't mean that this is it. This is the only way I'll be communicating my value. I think over time, as I professionally evolve, as my personal brand evolves, 
there is a higher probability, as I said, there will be another platform for me to move on to. And who knows, it might be even a completely new player in the marketplace who is right now brewing somewhere in the background, but slowly will storm up and take over the entire industry. While for now, well, I am with Squarespace and I'll keep you posted with how it goes. Thank you very much guys for stopping by. If you're new to this channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and check out the videos in the backlog. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you very much for stopping by. As always, let me know in the comment section below what you thought about this video. And I will see you all next Saturday, 10 a.m. Eastern on this very channel. Yeah, man. I think there was a video that I made on the personal brand management where I spoke about building your personal website, but I was thinking about it since then and I never had a chance or I was still researching different tools and I was trying to make a decision which way to go. So I'm finally really happy that, you know, you can go to tohirt.com, T-O-H-I-R-T.com and check out my new and personal website. And listen, comment this in below as well and let me know what you think about the website. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.